Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. I'm the senior sound design instructor here at DubSpot in New York City and online. Today we're going to take a look at Battery 4 and go through some really simple and practical layering techniques as well as a couple of new features that NI has added to this already awesome drum sampler. So better put on your 3D glasses for this one. Let's get ready to rock. All right, so I've got a little bit of a beat happening here. It's a nice little techno house style beat with a just a really simple bass line. Let's take a listen. I just used, uh, by the way, one of the basic 909 kits in here. It's the 909 multiple kit, really nice one. So here are the drums on their own. And these are sounding really good. We've got some nice classic 909 style sounds. The Roland TR-909, if you're not familiar, is sort of the uh, acid house techno mainstay drum machine. It's the it's sort of the de facto dance drum machine. It really sounds great. Nice classic sound that works really great in the club and has sort of transcended all these generations of dance music. Um, we're going to make some slight modifications today, and I'm going to show you two separate ways of layering drum sounds in battery. The first one is the simplest one and it's going to add a lot of pop to this kick drum. Now one of the things that I really like to stress in my sound design class and in my professional life generally is that it's up to us to come up with sounds that fit together and sound good on their own before we get to the mix. Uh, mixing is really really important for bringing a track home but we shouldn't be making things totally fit together in the mix. We should be doing a lot of that while we're designing our sounds. That's sort of the point of composing with sounds here. So here's one great thing that we can do to really make a kick jump out in the mix. It's also gonna make it so that everyone can hear the kick drum when they're listening on really small speakers, which is really important. We have to keep in mind these days that people are gonna be listening on iPod headphones, on their laptops, on their cell phone, on their sister's cell phone, on any little piece of whatever that they happen to bring on the subway train or in the car or outside of the ball game, you want to make sure that people can hear that kick drum. And that's something that is often lost with really small speakers. So let's isolate the kick here real quick. I'm just going to solo it. Now this is a great sounding 909 kick, but what would really make it come through is just a little bit more top end. That would also make it sound a little bit more modern. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this snare drum you heard correctly, folks, snare drum. And I'm just going to drag and drop it here right next to where this other kick 909 was. And let's go ahead and let's listen to that. So we've got the snare right next to our kick. And I've, I just moved it there so that we can see it really easily so that we know exactly what we're doing because this is going to become part of the kick. Now, with the snare selected, I'm going to go over to the key range here. Now it says C sharp one to C sharp one. And what that means is that only C sharp one is going to activate this cell. All right. Now, if I go ahead and click and pull down so that we have C1 to C sharp 1, now both C1 and C sharp 1 are going to activate this cell. Okay, that's C sharp 1. But now if I hit C1, which is the home uh, key for the key range of the kick here, we're going to hear both of them. So let's go ahead and play the pattern. Okay, so obviously this is a little bit too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on uh, this snare and we're gonna just adjust it. And this is one of the advantages of having a layered sound where the layers are in separate cells because with these cells, we have all these parameters that we can adjust. So I'm just gonna go ahead and activate the volume envelope and just dial it in nice and short so that it's just gonna give us a little click whenever the kick drum hits. And I'm just using the AHD envelope. It's nice and simple to use, attack, hold, decay. And I could even turn the volume down a touch. Okay, there's with. Here's without. And there's with, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to this pattern now. Okay, still totally awesome and fun. I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Let's hit, let's bring the snare drum in. This brings a little more pop and bounce to that kick drum. And again, it's gonna help it cut through and make sure that it can be heard in smaller speakers, which is great. We can't all be playing on huge subwoofers at the club all the time. Although I know many of us would like to be dominating that way. So we've got this layered kick drum sound. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a little bit of punch to this clap sound over here, okay? This is the main clap we're using. 
Okay, and I've got the volume envelope here. I've dialed it in a little bit so that it's nice and short. But what I'd like to do is just add a little bit more thump to it. The clap is slightly lacking a little bit of bottom end, which is going to really help it cut through the mix a little bit more. Okay, we're not trying to overlap our frequencies too much between the kick and the snare. I mean, there is going to be some overlap, but I don't want you to think that I'm trying to make the clap into a kick or the kick into a snare. We're just trying to make it so that these things have a lot of punch through the spectrum, and especially for more modern styles of dance music and for more modern, like, pop style drums and electro and even some techno style drums, you're going to want a wide range of frequencies covered with your sound. And one way that I tend to get a snare or a clap to cut through a mix is to bring up a little bit of the low mid. So let's just add something to it that's going to give it a little bit of push. I'm going to go ahead and click here and we're going to go to the editor. The editor in battery four is where we can actually import audio into a cell to be fired when we trigger the cell. So right now, all we have is this clap 909 sample, but I'm just going to go to edit. I'm going to hit add layer. Okay. Layer is the word that they're using now, not zone. Okay. And I'm just going to go for something that's a little bit lower in terms of the spectrum, uh, has a little bit of punch to it. Okay, and I'm going to use this sort of like bit crushed analog kick style sound that I have here. So let's just listen to the uh, analog kick by itself for a moment. Okay, and now let's let's bring it in here with the clap. Here's without. Here's with. All right, so let's just listen to the uh, the, the the snare sound itself and change the uh, tuning of it. I think it actually sounds best where it was at the beginning. Okay, I got the volume down just a little bit. And you can hear this is very subtle. Here's without. Here's with. This is a very subtle effect, okay? This is not one of those effects that's going to take something and totally transform it. We're just trying to add a little bit of support to a sound that we like, just to make it work a little bit better within the groove. So we've got a little bit of bottom end to it. We've added a, just a little bit of that extra punch in that nice bit crushy sound. Let's take a listen to it in the mix here. without just a little bit of low end there There we go. And once we do a little bit more mixing, you might be able to bring out certain aspects of that sound if you want. The other thing that we can do in Battery 4 that's really cool, that I really like, is if I have a sound here, like this, and I've also, I've edited the, uh, I've edited the envelope, I've got it nice and short, and keep in mind that when we layer sounds like this, the disadvantage is that we don't have individual cell controls for each of the samples. We only have the ones that are shown here in the editor. In other words, they share the envelope, they share all the effects and so forth. So you have to choose things that are going to work well together if you want to use this technique. The last thing I want to show you here is a new feature in Battery 4. I can go ahead and right click here and I can actually say render cell in place. This is going to render the cell to audio with the changes that I've made. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to save that in a way where I can just load this cell up very, very quickly as audio and uh, just drop it in and have the sound that I created here today. Let's hit it there, and it's going ahead and doing that. All right, so now it's rendered, and you can choose your render folder in your preferences. Generally, it's going to be in your documents, in your Native Instruments uh, Battery 4 folder. But if we look now, it does say clap909x1.wave. And if I go ahead and I open my Finder, I can actually show you where that is. I'm going to go into my Native Instruments folder. I'll go into Battery 4. I'll go into Rendered Audio, and there it is, clap909x one.
Okay, it renamed it for me automatically because it doesn't want me writing over the factory material. And there you go. So hopefully you found these techniques useful today. This is Battery 4, brand new from Native Instruments. Once again, this is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the senior sound design instructor and course designer here at DubSpot in New York City and online. I hope you enjoy this one and also keep an eye on the DubSpot blog for more tutorials. I'll catch you next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.